As predicted, frustrated by their inability to reach their military goals with the invasion of Ukraine, the Russian army has started laying siege to cities like Mariupol. So how can the sieges be broken? How can the human suffering be mitigated? We spoke to Cameron Shell, the CEO of Dragonfly, to talk about a low-risk, high-yield effort that he's just entered into in Ukraine. Cam, thanks for coming by the channel at short notice here. Ward, thanks so much. We're, uh, we're honored to be on your channel. We love following what you do, and, um, and thanks for having us. So let's talk about the inspiration for this effort, and, and then we'll go in detail about what it is exactly you're doing. One of the things that we've been doing for the last year in the state of Texas is working with EMS services, uh, designing drones that will actually deliver medical supplies uh, in temperature control boxes so that they can get to locations from any 911 center. Anybody in Texas can be reached within seven minutes. And so they'll deliver things like blood, insulin, pharmaceuticals, vaccines, uh, wound care kits, uh, anything that might be uh, required at an emergency scene or at a disaster recovery area. In fact, our drones also have the ability to read vital signs just from the cameras. So imagine, if you will, a drone coming into a disaster relief zone, delivering supplies in and actually being able to take the heart rates and the respiratory rates and the uh, blood pressures, uh, the heart rate variabilities, the blood oxygen levels of the survivors on the ground, transmitting that information back to the trucks that are rolling into the area. And, and of course, the, 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 the terrible conflict in, in Ukraine has been uh, you know, tugging at us extremely hard. And so our partner in Texas, Cold Chain Technology Services, uh, which is a large logistics provider to the, to the DOD, uh, contacted us saying that they had been had some outreach to them from some relief agencies in the Ukraine, wondering if we could if they could get drones that could actually deliver medical equipment. You know, this is something that we've been working on for some time. Um, and, and then they also wanted to ensure that they were drones that we, were, were sourced and or built in North America, um, as there's been some some challenges or, or reports of, you know, Chinese drones being used by Ukrainian forces that Russians can target very easy. To, to prove your point, we have some footage of uh, something along the lines of what you're talking about. So let's let's watch this real quick. And then on the backside, you can explain what is going on here. Sure. Oh, we'll He bought my uncle. That meter right now. So the, the, the challenge here for um, whether it's soldiers or relief workers is you know that drones are a target. And so being able to have them as secure as possible, uh, where they're manufactured in an area where you know particular codes and or uh, radio waves or signals or such aren't available you know, to enemy forces is, is pretty important to relief workers. The idea here is that we want to save people's lives. And so, um, so, so you revived Soldiers Ukraine, which is an incredible organization that I just, you know, you know, implore everybody to take a look at, uh, at rsukraine.org. That's rsukraine.org. And so um, by allowing us to, to have these drones that bring in these 35 pounds of medical supplies uh, that, that aren't as easily targeted you know, or, uh, you know, by enemy uh, fire or combatants and such is something I think is going to help change the theater over there for disaster relief and humanitarian reasons. So President Zelensky has beseeched the world to open the skies, defend the skies. And generally, when the chattering class responds to that petition, they call for a no fly zone. And it's been sliced and diced, including on this channel, why a straight stick no fly zone is not viable at this point, unless you are interested in a direct conflict between NATO and, and Russia. So when I think of what you guys are doing, I hearken back to the Berlin airlift <laughs> uh, and, and think of ways around a siege, because right now the siege of Mariupol is reaching 
horrific levels and and it doesn't look like it's going to be relieved anytime soon in fact they are trying to set up humanitarian corridors and organizations are trying to send supplies food water in and reportedly this is getting taken by the russian army on the way in and it's not reaching the people who need it so what you guys are doing feels like a 21st century solution a la berlin airlift well, it certainly could be. And I think the use case scenario is going to play out to be in incredibly interesting. Uh, you know, one of the questions that I've gotten is, well, so it, let's say you send a drone into an area to do some search and rescue, some thermals uh, to see if there's survivors in that building. So rather than having to send in workers into the building, you can just do thermals and see if there are survivors and or if there are people across a battle line or in a besieged area, you know, you can fly them in medical equipment. And uh, so what if they shoot down the drone? send another one. Well, what if they shoot that one down? Send 10 more. The, the, these are 10 to $20,000 drones. The, the, the ordinance that are used to destroy people and to kill people and to, and to take out buildings are 10 times or, or you know, multiple times more expensive. So it's 10, 10,000 of them. Like who cares? Like you, the people can be miles away flying them. They can just basically fly by wire. There can be, you know, I, I can imagine the GPS and the jamming over there is pretty intense right now, but you know, they can, they certainly can be flown and be miles away. And so if you lose two, five, 10, 15, send 50 more, like that's like that, you know, just the, it's just an overwhelming swarming effect that, that can happen there. And so I really think that what we're going to see here, while you know, there's only 10 being deployed initially, there's a couple hundred that will be deployed over the summer. But I really think if we see some solid use cases here, we could see the potential deployment of thousands of these uh, in, in short order. And I, and I think it's going to change the face of, of, um, of, of humanitarian aid. I hate to say warfare, but, you know, really the humanitarian effort and, and the impact that it can have in particular areas. Let's talk about the moving parts of this partnership and how you're getting these drones into theater. Yeah, so Cold Chain Technology Services, uh, a Texas-based company uh, at a, and a channel partner of Dragonflies, um, which does a lot of logistics for the DOD and NATO. And, and uh, so they're, they're incredible channel partners of ours. So they're the ones that are handling logistics to actually get the equipment over into theater. Uh, the exact route by which, um, it, what I do know, I wouldn't say, but what it, it, it could change in a heartbeat uh, anyway. So we have, we have you know, um, military uh, experts uh, in that area that are getting these, this product over into the area. Um, now, RSU Ukraine, uh, Revived Soldier Ukraine, does have trained pilots. And so for the initial order, we do have trained pilots, which will supplement with virtual training uh, as well. But if, as, is, if and as we expect the program to increase, uh, we'll probably likely do physical training over in you know, a neighboring uh, closer NATO country. So how many assets are in the first wave of the uh, effort? Yeah, there's three like this week and then 10 over the next uh, week and a half and then 100, uh, uh, hopefully uh, subject to some conditions and import and export details, but uh, before August. And, and what, uh, what are the basic capabilities of each one of these drones yeah. in terms of payload and what type of equipment and uh, gear would they be carrying? So the medical response drone is a, uh, a drone that, uh, that flies with a visual camera. We do not have thermals and such. Uh, on it. It could be equipped with thermals uh, or infrared. Uh, it has a capacity of 35 pounds of payload. It's top loaded. That top loaded box is actually thermal controlled. So you can bring in things like blood, insulin, pharmaceuticals, etc. cetera. Um, it, can, uh, it has about a five mile radius, uh, an effective five mile uh, radius. Uh, it can, you know, can be flown by goggle, obviously. And, um, and or you can program it to fly certain areas. But I imagine that the GPS um, and the scrambling and such over there would make that a pretty difficult situation. The search and rescue drones that we're sending in uh, are a slightly smaller drone, a uh, fair amount faster, um, and their their main uh, payload is the thermal. So it has it has uh, optical, it has thermal, it also has our vital intelligence technology uh, piped into it, which means that it can read vital signs uh, and such as well. And so those are the two immediate units that we'll put into into action. When we talk about your drones, we're not talking about like a predator or something that has offensive capability. You're talking about humanitarian, medical, yeah. sort of like a, a dust off drone. 
Yeah. So, so Dragonfly, which is a public company, DPRO is our symbol on NASDAQ. Um, uh, we, we do military contracting. Uh, we've worked for uh, great companies like uh, Aero Environment and, and others uh, like that. And, um, uh, and, and so we'll, we'll do work on specialized projects, on autonomous drones, on, on some just incredible, incredible uh, projects, which, which really helps strengthen our engineering bench. But as a company ourselves, certainly at least until this point, We've been very focused on public safety, public service, humanitarian support. I mean, we certainly do oil and gas and energy and and LIDAR and all, all kinds of other um, uh, drone applications. But but public safety has just been the thing that, you know, we have fallen into. And, um, you know, we've got this rich history with the first drone that saved the life. And we've got an incredible culture in the organization that's really all about, you know, saving time and lives. And, uh, and, we, and so we can really get amped up and work 24-7 about putting drones in combat situations that save lives. Um, it's certainly not that our drones couldn't be used offensively, but that's not our aim. As this war devolves and the Russian offensive is stuck, the prediction was that they would be doing more and more atrocities, and that's kind of what we're seeing. They're trying to lay waste and, and sieges on cities like Mariupol. And this kind of technology is the only hope, really, in terms of relieving what's happening to the citizens of these cities that are under siege. So bravo, Cam, for this effort. We'll check in with you periodically to see how it's going. Well, thank you. And, and Ward, thank you for your channel and thank you for your service. It's, uh, it's an honor to be on this show and uh, I, I hope I get to be on it again with you. Thanks, Cam. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. If you're a first-time viewer, please ring the bell and become a subscriber so you don't miss anything. Give me the likes and comment. Check the links below for merch. If you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon below, or become a patron at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. In the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again soon.